I think uh, the fans out there would rather see those cheerleaders in the open than us, but uh, we're all set for today's game as we take a look at our lineups brought to you by Southwestern Bell. Mark Young, one of the best defensive players in this conference, he gets the start for the Wildcats here today. Well, he comes in as a leading scorer, and he's known to play great defense, but more than anything, Kansas State needs points today from Mark Young. Manny Dyes got a start against Colorado and scored 17, had a big game for them coming off the injury shelf. As far as the Jayhawks are concerned, boy, are they welcoming back Scott Pollard with open arms. Yeah, first game since January 22nd. And what's important about Scott Pollard today, this is not a cameo appearance. This is not, oh, feel warm and fuzzy because you're a senior. They need Scott Pollard to get significant minutes here this afternoon. Pollard, one of the seniors, along with Jacques Vaughn, Jared Hass, B.J. Williams, the uh, lone non-senior starting, Ray LaFrance. Here's Tom Asbury of Kansas State as we look at your four keys to this game. Yeah, Tom Asbury's kids have got to play a perfect game, but don't tell the kids that. Just tell them go out and play your normal game, and somebody's got to believe that they can win this game here at Allen Fieldhouse. For Roy Williams, he's got to remind his kids, hey, look, we've had all this fun, all this emotion, but we got a game today. We've got to zero in, forget all the pomp, all the celebration, and we have to play. And this Jayhawk basketball team is better when they're having fun. When they're celebrating and giving high five, they have more fun, and they're more successful. 14-0 at Allen Fieldhouse this year. They've won 43 straight at home. The record for a Kansas team, 55, and coincidentally, that streak snapped by Kansas State several years ago. So Kansas State in the role of the spoiler here today. The Jayhawks, 26-1 overall, 12-1 in the conference. And one other side note, and I'm not sure it's a side note, but it seems like it today, Kansas will be going for their third straight conference title. Yeah, I mean, it's just unbelievable the amount of success that they've had to, you know, here in the last five or six years. And it's hard to build on it. You know, Tom Asbury talked about that. But no matter what happens today, you know, there's no way it can be more exciting or the team play any harder than they always do. You know who's happiest today? The florists in Lawrence. Because they sold a lot of carnations today as they coronated the seniors, six seniors on this Kansas team. Jock Vaughn, one of them, probably the most notable of all seniors as they celebrated Jock Vaughn, who came back for his senior year. He could have gone to the NBA after his junior year, and he said, no, nope, I'm going to take the road less traveled, and he's come back for a senior campaign. Well, Jock Vaughn epitomizes everything that's good and everything that's right about college athletics today. In the day and age, we hear so much negative stuff, and there's so many, you know, weirdos and wackos and so many bad apples. Man, Jock Vaughn is exactly the reason that we're all here and the reason we're involved in college athletics. You saw a couple of the seniors uh, on that starting lineup, four of them. There are a couple of walk-ons, though, that also will be recognized today. Joel Branstrom and Steve Ransom, and they'll get some playing time for Roy Williams as well. Roy was telling us just moments before the game that this, for him, a very emotional day. He said, these kids have meant so much to me, not just for what they've accomplished on the court, but these are kids that you could take home to your family and say, I'm out of town for four days, watch my kids, and not worry about it at all. I think one of the best statements I've heard in a long time, Roy Williams says, hey, look, I've got the best kids in the country and said a lot of coaches say that but I promise you nobody says it with more conviction than I do about these young men well these young men are uh, doing so much this year one thing they haven't done though is uh, gone a long way in the NCAA tournament they've been to three sweet 16s and that's a great accomplishment I don't want to take that away but this team is focused on winning the championship this year well and that's what I was talking about I should say was trying to talk about in the open <laughs> over all the noise that this team has got to realize that as great as it is to have the home winning streak, as great as it is to win the first Big 12 championship, hey, that's all unfinished business. I mean, that's just step one. The next step is you go to the Big 12 tournament and you win that outright. But you've got to have steps. And we're not there yet if you're the Jayhawks. You say, hey, look, we've still got it. We've got some more business ahead of us, so let's don't lose focus of that. As you look at Kansas, though, Reed, you, as I mentioned, went to three Final Fours and a couple of championship games with a great Houston club. These guys have all the elements, don't they? Hey, when Scott Pollard's healthy, you cannot pick one weakness in this squad. And that's what's so hard about going against them. You know, it's not like you go in and you say, oh, let's take the ball out of Josh's hands. Or let's keep uh, Ray from getting the ball. Or let's keep Jared. I mean, they can just kill you in so many different ways. The only people that can beat Kansas is Kansas. The only way I 
think for them to lose down the stretch is if they have a terrible shooting night from the outside. And even then, even then, they have so many weapons inside, they can negate that. Yeah, you know, I think that was true the last two or three years. They got knocked out on fourth shooting, you know, two for 18 last year. But I don't think that's the case this year. I think with Jared and Billy Thomas and Paul, you know, and all the different weapons they have, but it's a perfect example of the K-State game earlier this year. They shot 28% in a tough place to play and won. Yeah, it's uh, unusual to be able to do that and the Jayhawks did it. Their lone loss this year to the Missouri Tigers. They avenged that in their last game when they beat the Tigers 79 to 67. So Roy Williams teeing it up for this group for the last time at Allen Fieldhouse. Tom Asbury trying to get his club focused and ready as well. They cannot get caught up in the hoopla surrounding senior day. We got a chance to talk to Tom Asbury yesterday. One of the classiest examples of sportsmanship I've ever seen. You know, we said, hey, Tom, you know, what do you think about all this? All the flour throwing, it'll probably delay the tip off. And Tom Asbury, to his credit, he said, you know, guys, it doesn't matter what they do for these four guys. They cannot overdo it. I mean, the importance and the success that these four kids have had for Kansas basketball. He said, I don't care what they do. Let them do whatever they want, and I think it's justified, and I applaud them. Hey, and, and we applaud Tom Asbury for that. Absolutely. There, you know, there are a lot of coaches that say, oh, no, you know, Tip was supposed to be 305. I want to, you know, and on and on and yeah, on. Yeah. Hey, very, very classy man, Tom Asbury. We were talking with some of the Kansas State folks uh, before the game, and we said, we're going to try to keep this balanced, but it's tough. And they said, hey, we understand. Kansas, the number one team in the country, they deserve all the accolades that are thrown their way. Well, there's Pollard playing for the first time since the 22nd of January. And oh, they have, they Sorry, have six put six seniors out on the court. I think they're going to take a technical here or something. And Branstrom and Ransom, they came in. So that was a dilemma for Roy Williams. Who do you put out on the court? He put all six seniors out there. Wow. Yeah, I think they didn't actually start play. He just told them he wanted all six guys on the floor. And one of the reasons for that is, hey, Kansas State may take that as a slap. They say, that's an insult. You know, you're going to spot us some boys. Well, I think Roy probably just told the refs, look, before you start, before you throw the ball, let me just run everybody out there to give all my seniors a nice atroll. The real starting five, just like we outlined them for you. They did not give them a technical for that. I think he, you give them a little leeway on something like that today. It'll be interesting to see how they work Pollard back into the flow today. Well, you know, he's not going to be 100%. He, he went hard the full practice yesterday, but there's just no way you sit out six weeks and come back and pick up right where you left off. That ball kicked by Pollard, as Roy Williams describes him, one of the best post defensemen he has ever had. He had a good one in Oster tag, but he said Pollard's even better because he runs the court so well. And he even said the best I've ever coached. Yeah. I mean, so you toss in all those North Carolina kids, and that's a heck of a compliment. That one tipped out by B.J. Williams. It will still belong to Kansas State. The Jayhawks in their home white jerseys. The Wildcats in their road purple. Young's got it in the corner. Immediately double team. They get it to die. Looks like Kansas getting their hand on almost everything. Rhodes puts it up. That's rimming out no good. And LaFrance who has just been an animal lately. He picks up the rebound. Pollard, out of half for three. A too much energy on that one. Stolen though by B.J. Williams. Look for it! If it's possible, this crowd even louder. Yeah, did he cock that one and bring it? Man, Told you he's been playing like an animal lately. Wow, son, that was sweet. <laughs> Young for three. Oh, nothing but net. Kansas State has the lead. And that's a real cold-blooded shot right there for Mark Young. I mean, as excited as this crowd is, step up and hit his first three-point is huge. Fowler getting in low. He's fouled on the arm. You want to see it again, don't you? I want to see it again. Right. I'm saying foul somebody so we can see this again. Look where Rafe takes off from. Look, he takes off. And right now he says, I'm going to dunk it. I'm going to dunk it. I'm going to dunk it. And look, that's like the parting of the Red Sea. <laughs> <laughs> Mark 
John comes back and hits a nice three point. But you see the Wildcats clearing up. Oh, oh he's yours. No, they're not mine. He's yours. <laughs> <laughs> well, Pierce in there now. He's the normal starting forward for the Jayhawks. And he's got it on the wing. LaFrance, that one partially blocked by Rose. May, a guarded shot, fouled by Jacques Vaughn. First time Vaughn today. I love Ayumi May when he's got the ball in that situation. That's where he's the best. He is terrific off of the dribble. He does a terrific job for Tom Asbury of creating his own shot. And I think he's the very best in transition. Not down there setting up and coming off screens, but if you can get him the ball and let him create something, he's awful tough to defend. Wildcats, he would be their go-to guy, wouldn't he? Offensively. Well, and that's the problem Tom Asbury's had all had all year. Is trying to define who is our go-to guy. Yeah. I mean, Mark Young leads the team in scoring. Ayumi May has scored a lot of points. Had two or three games where he had over 20. Then he struggled a little bit. But that is the dilemma for this Wildcat team. They don't really have a go-to guy. They lead by three though the Wildcats early on. Just the start of things from Allen Fieldhouse. Pollard said his goal for today is to take a three-point shot. He has never taken one here. Well, I'm sure Roy's excited to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pollard can't get it to go down. He's fouled. I think Roy Williams just happy to see him running around on the court today. Yeah, I think if you ask Roy Williams, you say the real goal today for you big fellas to play about 20, 25 minutes, not get hurt, not be too sore, give us 10 points, give us 10 rebounds, and I'll be ecstatic. Forget that three-point stuff. Uh, and Coach Williams chewing his fingernails. He reminds us to take a look at Pollard's fingernails and see what color they are today. It looks like a little blue, perhaps, a little Jayhawk blue. You know, partner, <laughs> I'm getting old. <laughs> I can go with the chops. I can go with the hair. <laughs> Getting old when it comes to the fingernails. I'm older than you. <laughs> you know what's interesting though? This fingernails and the hair and the chops. It's interesting because Roy Williams says more than anything, Scott Pollard's taught him about tolerance. He said you cannot have a finer player or a bigger joy to coach on the floor than Scott Pollard. Yep. But still. Well, yeah, okay. Fingernails. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Well, you know, you allow him a little bit of that free spirit, like Bill Walton at UCLA. You put up with a little bit of that because of his talent and everything else. And, and plus, he is such a great kid. Schwarzenberger gets the long rebound off the missed three. Ooh, Manny Dice posting up hard against Ray down in his down low. because what Jared was trying to do was get over on the other side of the lane. Look, they've got a two-on-one and everybody's on the same side. So Jared does exactly what you're supposed to do. I mean, the behind the back's just an added bonus, but he's trying to get over there and split that defensive play. Pollard coming off with a huge smile on his face. Pass going to the line. And I love this kid. I mean, when you talk about his senior day, you know what they say? <laughs> they were saying like, Yesterday. Hey, come out and watch Jared dive on the floor for the last time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you talk about loving a kid. I mean, any coach would take, give me 20 Jared Hasses. I mean, they describe your play. Come see him dive for the last time. Play for the broken wrist since the first game of the year. It's broken wrist and a shooting hit. Yeah, and he's hitting 45% of his threes. Roy Williams said if we didn't know he was going to shoot that good, we'd have broken his wrist last year. <laughs> yeah, I'm just glad that he didn't say break my whole arm. Oh, oh, oh. Now we've got a foul inside, and that looks like it's going to go against Aker. I'm not exactly sure. We'll wait for the official. It is on Aker, his first. We saw Paco May run over the ref and slap his forearm. One of the things that Kansas does so well is they contest every shot that goes up. I mean, somebody's going to be jumping at you with a hand up. You're not going to stand up and shoot wide open jump shots. There's a three from Vaughn, and so far the Jayhawks haven't hit one from outside yet. dies almost had it stripped as he puts it on the floor a nice adjustment by may it still won't go and there's vaughn on the break where he's the best to pierce did he walk he yeah. did before yeah. the charge so no foul but a, a turnover for ku 
And I'm here to tell you, the jog bomb get from here to there as quick as anybody you've ever seen. I couldn't see him. I mean, he grabbed that ball as deep on the baseline, underneath the basket, uh, you know, as far away from the action as you could be. Beats everyone down the floor, and they've got a three-on-two fast break. Mm -hmm. D.J. Williams steals it away to Vaughn. He's looking for LaFrance. He's got him! Haas picks up the rebound. Ooh, Haas looked at a three, turned it down. Now Pierce. Kansas back in the lead. Hey, but listen, Marcus McCullough, that a boy. I mean, that time he stood up and he made Rake look down at him. Didn't get the charge, but he didn't foul. Also, it made him miss a dunk. Marcus stood up there and took a blow that time. He didn't take the old A defense, did he? Yeah, he didn't say, oh, your man. <laughs> 15 36 to go, first half, 6 5 in favor of the Jayhawks. job by Paco, uh, Paco by drawing that foul, but you know what he ought to do? Look right here, he ought to pull up for a jump shot. Look, he's past it right there, bam! Do a jump stop and go straight up, and you're going to have a lot better chance because I promise you, the team defense that Kansas plays, they're not going to let you just dribble down the middle of the court uncontested. So Ayumi May, or Paco May, whatever you want to call him, he goes to the line. Perfectly one of those two. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's how nice you are. Two misses, though, for Ayumi May. from your friends at Phillips 66, a performance company. Well, scoring so far, we've played a little over five minutes, Kansas by one. Today's Big 12 Conference game is a copyrighted telecast of Creative Sports Incorporated and the use of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this broadcast without the express prior written consent of Creative Sports is prohibited. Tom Asbury, he's got to be pleased with the way his club has responded so far, trailing by just one. You know, what he told us yesterday, he said, hey, look, it doesn't matter what celebration they have, can this place be louder? No. <laughs> can they put more people in here? Right. No. Mm -hmm. Can the kids play any harder? No. He said, I don't care what they do, it's the same every time you come to Allen Field has to play. Wildcats have struggled on the road this year, not just here, but anywhere. They're one and nine away from home. Pierce with a nice athletic move. Well, I don't know how Pierce got that shot over Manny. Guys, I thought Manny was all over that one. Jayhawks so far, three of nine from the field. Wildcats now one of oh, seven, make it two. Man. McCullough. What a, acre. what a sweet tip in. Now McCullough with the steal. Basketball this afternoon, and the Jayhawks going to have their hands full. There's that. McCullough coming off the bench, doing a lot of damage for the Wildcats so far. Beautiful. Beautiful 
for backdoor screen. Jared has absolutely set a perfect backdoor screen to open up that alley oop. Well, Ray for Prince. He gets uh, another bucket. He's got four now. Jones playing on his back and Holler just got into the paint and it made it easy from there. Jones off his sneaker out of bounds. It will belong to Kansas State, so I think PJ Pugh got a piece of it. We've got another timeout with 11.43 to go in the first half. Asbury's Wildcats hanging in there, still trailing by just one. A Studio 66 update from the OK Corral, and right now it's the Cowboys of Oklahoma State all over the Sooners of Oklahoma. Marlon Dorsey from downtown. The surprise attack is on. Back to you guys. Thanks a lot, Doug. Well, here it's Kansas State hanging in there, trailing by just one, and this is why. Yeah, watch, Joe. Like, top right corner. Look how far he comes to get this rebound. Look, nobody anywhere near him. So often kids go, oh, coach, I went in position to get that rebound. Well, get in position. I mean, just <laughs> go get it. Marcus McCullough with a sweet baseline move. I mean, did you see how far Akers, Aker came? Kansas, the trap works. Now, Vaughn, that one blocked. So, wow, Chris Griffin got up there. It'll belong to the Wildcats. Man, I tell you what, Chris Griffin just absolutely set up Jock Vaughn, took a little half step, half step back, and then just slapped it against the backboard. And then in the NBA, that's golden. In college, this is not golden. You can slap the ball against the backboard. That's a great defensive play. Can you save the ball? And trailing by one. Interesting, Oklahoma State beating Oklahoma after the Sooners beating Texas Tech. That South is really getting crowded. McCullough, that's a travel. Texas Tech winning today over Texas, so the Longhorns at 9-5 and five now. Texas Tech at 8-6. and six. Kansas, again, if they win today, will wrap it all up. You know, the bottom line is everyone expected that. I mean, they expected Kansas. They're head and shoulders above everybody else in the conference, and everyone acknowledges that. And then after that, man, it's just a big old cluster. Isn't I mean, it? nobody was going to walk away with just one or two losses. Iowa State, Colorado, Texas, Texas Tech. Now you add in Missouri and Oklahoma can beat you, and Nebraska can beat you. I mean, yeah, Nebraska did beat Iowa State today. That one in Ames. Oh, the Cyclones have lost two in a row now. Their record drops to 95. Colorado, they play Missouri tonight. They can take over second place in the Northern Division of the Big 12 race. Oh, it's going to be exciting as we're getting down to the final couple of games. With the shot clock down to five, Vaughn puts up a long three. We've been stuck on 14-13 for a while, haven't we? 
No, I mean, both teams playing great defense. That last sequence down there, Jill Baker did a great job getting in front of Scott Pollard. Give these Wildcats credit, too. They are not intimidated or impressed too much with these Jayhawks. They played them tough in Manhattan, playing them tough again so far here today. May, that rattles home. Isn't he sweet off the dribble? Mm -hmm. I mean, you hardly ever see him come off the screen with that same kind of rhythm that he can get off of the dribble. It's usually the other way around, That's isn't exactly it? right. Usually a shooter would rather come off the screen and set his feet and catch the ball. May with a steal to Griffin. He pulls up. And nothing but net. Back to a three-point Wildcat lead, matching their biggest. Vaughn leaning in, drawing contact, no call. And what are they going to call? A whistle here on the rebound. I think it's against Kansas. Yeah, Chris Griffin just got an eye opened up. I think he's bleeding. But Tom Asbury's got to be ecstatic with the offense he's been getting. Paco May off the dribble, and they're coming down, and they're taking quick shots. You know, David, we saw him earlier in the year, and we both commented, we thought that this Wildcat basketball team was better when they took these kind of shots right there. They're not forcing it. They're coming down, and that's a little 10-foot jump shot. There's no reason Tom Asbury's team to pass that shot up. As soon as you get it, you pull up and take that one. Asbury concerned now with uh, one of his point guards, Chris Griffin, you mentioned he hit the court hard, and I'm not sure if that eye is open, but we did see a little blood. And I think that was a good no call. John Vaughn initiated the contact, yep. jumped into it. I thought that was very good officiating. Our officials today, Tom Harrington, Stanley Reynolds, and David Marisic. During the nine-minute mark of the first half, Young finding Aker. Baker bangs it off the glass, but gets his own rebound. Gets Williams up in the air, still can't hit it. Pass! Oh, and Bay got up there! Wow! Oh, my goodness! Man, you talk about get that out of here! Whoa, is that a blocker? Oh, look at this! Goodness gracious, get up, look, just catches it! Give me that ball! Oh, man! I mean, you talk about challenging some shots. That is some defense right there. Well, Griffin earlier blocked Jock Vaughn, but boy, was that one sweet. They called a foul, though, on May on that play. He must have gotten him with a body. And Hass at the line. Hass, one of those seniors who hasn't lost a game at home. And these guys were freshmen, these seniors. They lost three games in the Big 12. And or actually Big 8 at that time and haven't lost since. That was the year, the only year they didn't win the uh, conference championship. And that was the year that Missouri went 14-0. Schwarzenberger bailed out a foul on Ryan Robertson. I tell you what, if you're the Wildcats, you need more help back there coming against that press. Schwarzenberger does a good job handling the ball, but you are not going to beat the Kansas Jayhawks pressure by dribbling the ball up the floor by yourself. The Roy Williams Club read averaging 87 points a game, and he likes to say, and who would argue with him, that his offense is really developed from his defense. 17-15, though, the Wildcats with a two-point lead. May and Billy Thomas got a piece of that one. there as he pulls up on the baseline. That's just terrific fundamentals. Anytime you're bringing the ball down in that situation, you want to take it as deep as you can and take it to the baseline just like Hass did. Tied at 17, under eight to go, first half. Young pulling up. Nope. Aker, though, LaFrance blocked it, and a foul on LaFrance. That's his second. Gerald Aker doing a terrific job down here of getting offensive rebounds. This is about his fourth or fifth offensive rebound, and he's just down there battling. Look, that's great inside position. Gets the ball, collects himself, and goes up strong. Well, that's great effort there by the big fella. Well, consider this. 
the Jayhawks normally out-rebound their opponents by 10 per game. That's an unbelievable statistic. But today, it's in a 17-11 advantage for the Wildcats. Aker, a 52% free throw shooter, has the first one rim out no good. A little hesitation in the shot from Aker, and he misses them both. Robertson brings it across the timeline. Thomas, he's loose for three. Terrific job that time, Billy Thomas using the screen from Ray, from Ray LaFrench. Terrific job of just fading out there into the open spot. Anchor puts up a wild one. Thomas loses the handle, but he gets it back. Thomas, 63 of his 83 shots this year are three-pointers. LaFrench, almost impossible to stop down there. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to play behind him and let Ray catch the ball right there, you need some help. Somebody's got to come down and double-team. 22nd timeout, Kansas State. They're on their field here at Allen Fieldhouse, and oh, the old one-two punch for Kansas, the outside-inside game for KU. Watch Ray LaFrance set the screen, and then Thomas just fades out into a sweet spot. Look over here on the right of your screen. Look, there's a the screen, and he just makes the defensive player run down under the baseline, spots up beautifully, and then they're so tough because they come right back at you inside. Look at the patience, spacing, nobody there to double team. Catch the ball, check the defense, make your move. Picture perfect post play. If you don't double team LaFrance and he gets it there, it's like two points, isn't it? Well, and a lot of that's the system because you saw Ray catch the ball, and then did you see how everyone cut? away from him i mean there was nobody left over there to double team i want to make it clear i don't have a vote i don't know who does but if i did rafe the french will get my vote for big 12 player of the year hands down no brain blocked away by williams thomas for another three Akers got yet another rebound gerald has just done a terrific job on the glass Kansas, though, it's the run here, and they lead it now. Their biggest margin, they lead it by five. Tipped out, that one tipped out by Thomas. Schwarzenegger tried to save it. That would have belonged to Kansas State. I mean, you never want to criticize a kid for hustling. Tom Asbury's running over to him and goes, hey, uh, Aaron, I think it was our ball. It would have been their ball because it definitely went off Thomas. But we're back after this from your friends at Phillips 66, the performance company. Reed Geddes, I'm Dave Armstrong at Allen Fieldhouse in Lawrence. Tom Asbury's club took a three-point lead, but now they trail by five, and Kansas has the basketball. And for Tom Asbury, his squad's gone three minutes and 30 seconds without scoring any points. And rebounding, though, still belonging to the Wildcats, and mostly Gerald Aker. And you look at the rebounds for Kansas, 14, and seven of those belong to Rafe LaFrance. Pick here off the timeout, or maybe a three-pointer. Young with an impressive rebound. Williams got a hand on that one, but Aker was right there. Asbury was telling me a couple of weeks ago, he said, for whatever reason, we just seem to play really well against the Jayhawks. So that's been true, even though Kansas has won the last nine in a row, they've been close. Scramble for it. And they've got a tie-up, and the arrow will give it to the Wildcats. This gives you an indication of uh, what we're talking about as the Wildcats have won more times here than any other opponent. Boy, this uh, rivalry is just steeped in tradition. Well, you mentioned it earlier, three years ago, this exact same scenario. Roy Williams, squad number one in the country, and the Wildcats came in here and upset them. Mm -hmm. that one. <laughs> 
six on the shot clock. Aaron thought he could draw a foul and just kind of throw it up there. I, mean, I don't think Scott jumped, just slapped it back at him. 56 block shots for the senior out of San Diego. He has uh, 201 block shots now, Pollard. That moves him ahead of a kid named Danny Manning into second place all time in Kansas history. Paco May with five on the shot clock. Hits a three. Wow. That's a big shot. Yeah, and that's the first time we've seen him catch the ball and just go straight up with his jump shot. Back door and well read again by May. As he made, did make that play earlier, he got that lob to, to Ray from the front. But I tell you what, that was terrific weak side defense by Paco. Griffin back in there after having his noggin knock. And another three for Young, and just like that, Kansas State back on top, under five to go, first half. Pollard, he's fouled by Aker, who has looked like we're just standing there. Watch the shot clock winding down there, and then the jump shot by Paco Main. Look how far beyond the three-point line he is. I mean, he is way, way out there. That's beautiful. And then they come right back and hit another one. And look, he's out there behind it. I mean, they're just shooting it up there. Philip 66, proud to be the title sponsor of Big 12 basketball. Be sure to stop by and fill up at Philip 66 with high-quality, super-clean gasoline. Only from Philip 66, the performance company. Pollard at the line today. You see one of three. Whatever they get from Pollard today will be a bonus read just to get him back into the game and back into the flow of play. Well, and I mean, for Roy Williams, the good news is for the first time this year, his team is almost 100%. Yeah. Yeah. That ought to scare the living daylights out of everybody else in the country. <laughs> yeah. I'm saying, wait a second. You mean they're still not 100%? Isn't that amazing? They're only 26 and 1 on the year. They've been ranked number one by the coaches' poll all season long and almost all season by AP. Here comes Young. They beat the full court pressure. Oh, wow. Mark Young goes and slams it home. Hey, that was absolutely terrific fast break. Crowd growing a little bit restless now. Zone defense for the Wildcats. Bradford just barely gets it out to ball. Now they work at the LaFrance. Ooh, that was halfway down and came back out. Another rebound for Kansas State. They about rebounded the Jayhawks 21-14. Griffin with a nice man. I, this does not even look like the same Kansas State team we've seen earlier this year. Count the bass getting a foul. There's Pass on the floor again. Let's watch a couple of fast breaks, one each way. Well, this is after a made basket. I mean, that's where Jock Vaughn's so tough. This is after a made basket. How do you beat all five guys down the floor after you made the basket? That's unbelievable. Watch this screen right here. Dax Jones highlighted. Watch this screen on the fast break. They're coming down, they're coming down. Look, he's just riding him, just holding him right there. That is terrific basketball. And that's not accidental. I mean, that's set up. Dax Jones, that's a set up play and perfectly executed. Hey, and great camera work, by the way. He's playing racquetball. They call it a hinder. But it's a good screen out, out top for Dax Jones. Now Hass misses the free throw. Kansas State still on top by one. With under four to go, first half. And he dies. A little bit off target. Here comes Hass again. Credit Dax Jones again doing a great job boxing out, boxing out on Pew. Terrific job down there. So under four to go in the first half, and the Wildcats will not die. Kansas State leading the top-ranked team in the country by one.
Kansas State leading it by one. They're doing it with their defense, and that should come as no surprise. These two clubs outstanding defensively all season long. Well, and the problem for Tom Asbury's not been the defense, as you can see. It's been the field goal percentage. Yep. They've just struggled down on the offensive end. Well, the reason Kansas has only lost one game. Look at that. They're hitting almost 50% of their shots, while the Wildcats hitting under 40% of theirs. That's the, one of the differences between these two clubs. And so far today, Kansas State out shooting Kansas. Remember, in their earlier meeting, Jayhawks shooting just under 29% in that one. Pass gets a piece of that one and steals it away. Kansas State staying in that 2-3 zone. Great feed from the freshman to the junior. Nick Bradford with a beautiful pass to Rafe. Here comes the trap again. Schwartz and Duva read it well. Oh, what a oh, he gets in front of that pass. Oh, is this kid tough? Unbelievable. Dax Jones down there at seven feet. Got the mismatch on Vaughn, and he comes up with the ball. Second timeout, K State. Well, Nick Bradford started this run with a beautiful little hook pass. Now, watch Rafe open up. Look, he turned, he watched the ball the whole way, had his hands up, ready for the ball. And then it comes down on the defense. Look, Dax Jones is seven feet. He says, I got a mismatch. When you got a little guy behind you, don't pass it to the big guy throw it up there to his hands don't throw it down on the floor man you put a ball on the floor and Chuck Vaughn will just absolutely eat it up and then Jared has does a terrific job of finishing on the fast break Vaughn's offense starting to come around for Kansas and isn't that a scary thought good pass in here to Hass but his defense has been a constant for Jock Vaughn this year I I'm telling you this Kansas team ought to just scare the bejeebers out of you I mean they're still getting better they have not reached their maximum yet and they haven't reached their maximum potential that is a scary ball and you know the thing about that too is in years past this team might have peaked back in january and february oh. as acre gets loose inside again for yet another foul but they have you're right they haven't reached their peak yet and that's got to be great news for jayhawk fans everywhere during the two minute mark kansas leading it by one job of keeping the Wildcats in this game. Aker really creating some acreage for the Wildcats in the paint. I love it when you do that. Look at those rebounds. 27 to 16. I mean, that is outstanding. There's no question for Tom Asbury. That's what's keeping these kids in the game. Let's see if we can pick up on what Coach Tom is telling us. I know 
exactly what he's saying. Whatever you're doing, just keep doing it. <laughs> just keep doing it. <laughs> That's exactly right. Well, the Wildcats really have been playing better lately, even though they've lost their last two. They've won two of their last four. They're trying to stay out of that cellar. No one wants to be that last place club in the Big 12 Conference. That means you're going to have to play the Jayhawks in the second round. Yeah, nobody wants to do that. I mean, nobody. But the bottom line is, I mean, who do you want to play? You want to play the Cyclones? No. You want to play the Red Raiders? No. They ought to be good in that. You want to play? I mean, you don't want to play anybody. No, that's right. So it doesn't matter where you are. I mean, you've got a tough road. But especially those teams that don't have the bye. In order to get to the championship, they got to play four games in four days. And that is tough. And let me clarify a little bit, too. For Kansas State or whoever is that last place club in the Big 12 Conference, for them to play the Jayhawks on the second day, that means they have to win that first round game. And that's no easy bargain. Now, Kansas State, though, right now leading it by one. We're nearing the one-minute mark of this first half. Wildcats are doing a terrific job handling this half-court press. Yes, they are. Shot clock down to 17. Pollard got a hand on that when it goes out of bounds. Will belong to the Wildcats. The way you attack a 1-3-1 half-court trap like Kansas is throwing at you is your pressure release is at the top of the key. When they, when they come out and they trap the point guard, watch a Wildcat come flashing up to the free throw line top of the key, and that's the pass that's open. And then when he catches the ball, if he'll turn and look at Roy Williams' defense, he'll have a three-on-two and can go ahead and attack the basket. Dies, takes it away from Pierce, and then Robertson. He steals it away from Dyes. You see the time remaining in the first half. Robertson open for a three. Williams tries once and twice to get it. Tip back out to Robertson, stolen by Schwarzengruber for a moment. Fought for, we've got a tie-up, and this time the arrow belongs to the Jayhawks. Boy, terrific hustle that time from Schwarzengruber. They were down there, B.J. Williams was wide open. Schwarzengruber just came zipping down in there, and that's what you want your guards to do, especially when you're playing a zone defense. Don't just stay up there at the free throw line. You've got to crash down there and help the big guys. Jayhawks take a 20-second timeout. Good move with nine seconds to go. If you don't take your 20 in the first half you lose it anyway yeah you get three 20 second timeouts and the most you can use is two and a half and so a while ago when kansas state thought they were calling a 20 second the ref went over to him and said no you've already used two of them you got to enlarge that make it a regular and it doesn't carry over all three of them don't carry over the max will carry over are two let's quickly send you to studio 66 and doug bell who, oh excuse me i thought we were going to uh throw it to him but he'll be ready in uh, studio at halftime to bring you up to date and all the festivities in the big 12 today well a lot of kansas fans remembering monday night against missouri when robertson threw up a long three-pointer from near half court to give them momentum as they went to the locker room with basic 40 footer yeah that's a lot Good job on the defensive end. Robertson trying another three, and another one from up behind the backboard, and that'll do it. Well, the emotion that started this day for the Jayhawks, senior day at Allen Fieldhouse, it's kind of evaporated now, hasn't it? As they go off to the locker room, it's Kansas State who has smiles on their face as they lead by one. Today's game is brought to you by Phillips 66, makers of super clean gasolines and tripartic motor oil. By Bud Light, if you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. By Fairfield Inn by Marriott, traveling's an adventure where you stay shouldn't be. Shelter Insurance, for your life, home, car, farm, or business, Shelter Insurance will always be there for you. And by Southwestern Bell, for all your communication needs, yes, it's that simple. A close one in Lawrence, Kansas. The Wildcats on top of number one Kansas, 31-30 at halftime. Hi, everybody. Doug Bell back here at Studio 66. This is the Bud Light Halftime Report. Nothing but close games today. 
on the Big 12 Network. We had overtime in Ames, Iowa, and Oklahoma. It's another one-point game at halftime. Let's check it out. Kelvin Sampson watching the Sooners take it on a depleted Oklahoma State bunch. Marlon Dorsey from downtown for three. Kelvin does not like that defense. Corey Brewer, the nice spin move inside. Corey's a heck of a player for OU. Cowboys down to seven players. They're even using football players because of injuries, and they trail by only a point, 34-33. Let's check out that game. At Iowa State, Tim Floyd had never lost to Danny Nee and the Cornhuskers before today. Kelvin Cato follows up the miss right here with a baseline dunk. The Cyclones came roaring back after trailing about five at halftime. Stevie Johnson with a remarkable move inside. Oh, they were fired up at the Hilton Coliseum. But Teron Lou quieted the crowd. Two of his career high, 30 points. Super sophomore, super clutch. Danny Nee celebrates. An overtime win, 74-69, their first road win in the Big 12 this season. Let's check out the Red Raiders of Texas Tech, desperately needing a victory against their arch rivals of Texas. They lost two in a row. James Dickey watching Tony Batie. Whoa, hey, slam dunk for the Batman. Reggie Freeman comes in and ties it at 70 with a nice play there. Corey Carr gets fouled with seven seconds, hits two free ones, and they hang on in Lubbock. Texas Tech 72-70. Boy, they needed that as they looked at the NCAA tournament. In the Big Ten, number two Minnesota against 23rd ranked Illinois. The Fighting Line trying for the sweep. Lon Kruger watches Kiwani Garris, two of his, three of his 23 points with that one. Gophers in transition. Courtney James with a nice play. Minnesota goes up by one on free throws. Then Garris drives at the end of regulation. The ball stolen away. Minnesota hangs on to go to 13 and one in the Big Ten. Clem Haskins team having a terrific year. 67-66, and it looks like they're zeroing in on a top seed for the NCAA tournament. We'll be back with more here on the Bud Light Halftime Report, but first, this week's Classroom Champ is brought to you by Phillips 66 MasterCard. When it comes to convenience and value, it's at the top of the class. And today, honors go to Marcus Jones, the talented junior golfer and majoring in sports management from Texas. Welcome back, everybody. The score at halftime, Kansas State on top of Kansas, 31-30. That would be a stunning upset. Hi, everybody. Doug Bell back at Studio 66. Hope you're enjoying the Bud Light Halftime Report. The Missouri Tigers have had a, well, a tough season this year, but the one constant from Missouri has been the big man in the middle, Kelly Thames. He has been one of the reasons the Tigers have had reason to smile, and he's the focus of this week's Southwestern Bell Big 12 Conference Call. Thames hit the shot of the year for the Missouri Tigers when he picked up this loose ball in the second overtime and hit the jumper for the upset over the top-ranked Jayhawks. Besides that shot, Thames also leads Missouri in points and rebounds, scoring nearly 16 a game while pulling down seven a game. At 6'8", Thames can do it inside and out, and judging by better than 51% field goal percentage, he can always find his shot. You get a chance to see Thames Tuesday on the Big 12 Network as the Tigers play host to the Texas Tech Red Raiders, where this week's Long John Silver's Catch of the Week will no doubt have his team ready to play. Texas Tech trying to battle back from their two-game losing streak, and they did with a win today against Texas. James Dickey trying to get his program back into the NCAA tournament once again. We'll take you out to the second half of your game in just a moment, but first things first, like our Phillips 66 Rookie of the Week. This week's honors go to Rayford Young at Texas Tech for the second straight week. Last week, Young had a career-high 14 points, 9 assists against Texas A&M, then came back with 7 points and 5 assists against Baylor. Hey, congrats to Rayford from the Big 12 and Studio 66. Back out to your game right after this. That flower wilting just a little bit here as the Kansas State Wildcats leading it by one, 31-30 at halftime. With Reed Geddes, I'm Dave Armstrong. And Reed, we talked about it at the very first part of this game, how the only Achilles heel for Kansas would be outside shooting. They're one of 11 from three-point range. Yeah, that's exactly right. I guarantee you right now, Roy Williams is in there going, one for 11. What are you doing shooting out there? Get that ball inside. Get it inside. And I guarantee you they'll come out and they will just hammer that ball inside the Pollard into LaFrentz. Well, let's take a look at those first half highlights. Brought to you by Shelter Insurance. Well, hands down for the Wildcats. The story has been the rebounding. They've got a 28 to 19 rebounding advantage. And most of it has come from Gerald Aker. Had a huge first half. Eight points, eight rebounds. But the Wildcats also had 10 turnovers. And as they've done all year long, the Wildcats, the Jayhawks, 
playoffs have been tough on defense. They get the ball, they push it, and this is what keeps them in the game, is that they just do such a great job of transition. And then this is the backside of the last steal. They then convert it. They not only get the steals, get the turnovers, but then convert it into points. For your life, home, car, farm, or business, shelter insurance will always be there for you. Well, I think Reed's right. I think you're going to see Kansas trying to get it inside in the second half. We'll see together in a moment. Today's game is brought to you by Phillips 66, makers of super clean gasolines and Trop Arctic motor oil. Bud Light, if you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. And by Long John Silvers. Take a fresh look at Long John Silvers. Wildcats are led by as many as three in the first half. Neither team led by more than five. Lead by one at half. And let's see how they got there as we take a look at the numbers from that first half. Well, the shooting percentage has been huge, but look at that rebounding, 28 to 19. And what's kept the Jayhawks in it are those 10 turnovers. You take away those turnovers, and KSU's got a pretty comfortable lead here at halftime. That hasn't been too often this year that the Jayhawks find themselves behind at halftime. But believe it or not, it has happened in a 26-1 and season. The one thing, though, for KU, every time they are behind at the half, they have won. They have never been behind at halftime at Allen Fieldhouse this year, where they are 14-0. Well, and they've, they've overcome some huge deficits, 16 points, 13 points, 14 points this year. And so one point doesn't mean anything. But listen, let's don't minimize Tom Asbury's oh. team and the effort that they got in the first half. That was a terrific first half. And we talked about the Ford keys that they had to play a perfect game. Well, that may not have been perfect, but that was as good as they've played all year long. And the kid standing right in front of us, Mark Young, a big part of the Kansas State story in that first half, along with Gerald Aker, Ayumi May, Schwartz and Dribble with the ball now. Kansas State leading by one. Tell you what, when the Jayhawks get the ball back, you watch that ball go into Ray LaFrance. I just promise you it's going to get slammed in there. Young slamming it into dies. Now back out top. May had a foot on the line. That was a two-point attempt. Rooming off no good. And here comes Vaughn on the break. LaFrance walked with it before he took the shot. LaFrance had a pretty good first half anyway with 8.7 rebounds, even though Kansas didn't try to get him the ball that much. Yeah, they definitely weren't concentrating on it. But give credit to the Wildcats. I mean, they played awful good defense down there. Manny Dyes did a good job. Sean Rose was on him a little bit. Gerald Aker came off the bench and did a good job on him. Schwartz and Drover. That's a two-pointer for Schwartz and Drover. Back to a three-pointer. No, they called it a three now. Schwartz and Drover did have his feet behind the line. So Kansas State leading by four. They were leading by four. Yeah. Well, I think that was pretty good strategy. Taco May gave him a little bit of space just because Jared hadn't hit a shot out there today. Gave him a little bit of space, and what he was trying to do was keep the ball from going inside the race. But I tell you what, if Jared hits a couple of those, you're not going to give him any distance at all. No. First one that passes hit from beyond the arc. And now Hass. Oh, my gosh. He just tackled it. He just got in the way of May. And May traveled with it. Pass. I'll tell you what he should do at the end of today's game. Get out a little chainsaw and take a piece of this court with him. Uh, he probably could just have surgery and get it out of his hip. <laughs> <laughs> out of his elbows, knees. He probably replace half the floor here. Unbelievable. just rolled Ray out. Ray came across and he just shoved him about three feet away from where he wanted to catch the ball. Yes, he did. That's pretty good post defense. So Hass forced to take another three. He doesn't get it. And the rebound comes to Young. so much trouble in the air. 
trouble. That was great defense. Paul Pierce, instead of just standing there, went ahead and cut to the basket. This crowd trying to cheer on the Jayhawks. They haven't seen these guys lose here since Kansas State did the trick in 94. Poked out by LaFrance. Yeah, that was a terrible passing angle. They need to take that ball down to the baseline if they're going to throw it, if they're going to feed the post. Pass, and it's stripped by May. A foul, though, on Dyes. Manny Dyes with the foul. Kansas will have it out of bounds. Let's go back a couple of possessions ago. Now watch Manny Dyes just ride Ray LaFrance out. Now watch where he's coming. Now look, he just shoves him, shoves him, shoves him, shoves him. And look, he, I mean, that is, that's about four or five feet away from where Rafe wants the ball. That is great post defense by Manny Dice. You tell your guys, hey, look, don't let them just run down there. Mm -hmm. I mean, contest them. You go stand in the blocks. you got as much right to be there as they do. May saves it for Rhodes. Vaughn trying to steal it, and he does. But then stolen away by Schwarzenegger. What a series. Pushed away by Vaughn. Chuck's got it. He's fouled by Schwarzenegger. Here. Look, he got in front of him. He got his arms down. No, that is, I'm sorry, that is not an intentional foul. I mean, you you make that call when someone hammers him from behind and knocks him into the standard or knocks him up into the bleachers. But I, you don't call that when you get in front of him. Look at the defense here. Look at the hustle. Vaughn. Look, he keeps his ball alive. Look, he's dribbling. He's scribbling. <laughs> That's what that is. That's scribbling. And great hustle by Swartz. But then watch Vaughn stays with it. Runs down there and pokes the ball loose. Great effort. So Vaughn will shoot the free throws after the intentional foul, and then Kansas will get the ball. Now, I've said it a bunch of times this year, and I agree with Tom Asbury. I mean, nobody wants to see someone take a cheap shot and knock them up into the stands. Mm -hmm. But on defense, if you can get down there and get in front of the player, get in front of him, and then come down across his arms, you just can't call that an intentional foul. 16.48 to go in this one. Asbury, his club now trailing by one, just like they were at the half, or excuse me, uh, they were uh, leading by one at the half. And those free throws were Jock Vaughn's first points this afternoon. They to stay back into their 2 3 zone. to these Wildcats. I mean, we talked about the Kansas was going to come out and try to slam the ball inside, but the Wildcats have done a terrific job of keeping it away from him. And then down on the offensive end, just your basic give and go. And hands down, the best pass in basketball, 90% of the time, is back to the guy who passed to you. That foul on B.J. Williams, his first. Schwarzenegger hitting the free throw. He's had an off year shooting-wise from especially three-point range this year, but boy, he's still a great free-throw shooter, hitting 84%. And into that, a sea of humanity. <laughs> okay, that's a good concentration. I was getting, I was getting kind of seasick just watching it. <laughs> Me too. Well, back to a one-point Kansas State lead. They do work it inside to LaFrance, and he is fouled by Aker. But did you see how hard Rafe wanted that shot? I mean, how bad he wanted it. He got the ball, and he said, I am going to get a shot up. And that was pretty good defense. Was it a foul? Yeah, he bumped him with the body. But look, I mean, Rafe was determined that he hadn't gotten the ball enough down there. He said, I'm just going to get this ball up there. LaFrance coming off a game in which he had 31 against Missouri. Last eight games with Pollard out of the lineup, LaFrance has averaged 23 with 10 rebounds and hit 61% of his field goals. 31 against Missouri, man, the 31 he had against UCLA this year. You know, before that six to eight week period for a team that doesn't have any stars, that doesn't have a go to guy, Rafe LaFrance has been the star and the go to guy. Yes, he has. Nearing double figures and points, this would do it if he hits it. Gerald Aker had to check out of that game because that's his third foul. I think that's pretty good coaching. Go ahead and get him out now. 
but I'd sure get him back in at about the 12 minute mark. Five second call, the pressure too much for Kansas State. Asbury saddled with the fact that he can't call many timeouts this half. He has only two left. Uh-oh. LaFrance gets loose on the inbounds play. And you just don't play man-to-man -man when you've got the ball out of bounds underneath your basket. There's just too many ways that you can get hurt. They're on their feet at Allen Fieldhouse now. Young with Pierce right in his face. Here comes Vaughn. Recovering on defense now. Pierce, no. Oh, look at that! Hit by oh, 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 baby, was that sweet? Oh, underneath the basket, coming back up over his head. That was sweet. Listen to this place. Out of bounds, off Young. The defense keying a comeback by Kansas. And we're back after this from your friends at Phillips 66, the performance company. With 15-16 in the second half, the Jayhawks have upped their lead to five points, and they're on a 6-0 run. Watch Ray French. You see him highlighted. The shot goes up, and then look how far he goes to go get the rebound. He's out there, I mean, he's 10, 12 feet away from the basket. Look, man, he dies. You see his head. His head turns, and he follows the shot all the way up. Boy, when that shot goes up, don't look at the ball. Find your man, make contact, and then go get the rebound. Okay, I will. 15-15 to go. Kansas by five in the ball. You've got me convinced. Well, I mean, that, that's your natural tendency. You're out there on the floor and the shot goes up. Everyone turns their head and goes towards the ball. LaFrance adjusts his shot again. How can he not be player of the year in this conference? Wow. You're just not going to stop him with one guy. No. I mean, you're going to have to double him and double him quick. Kansas playing with the frenzy right now. Jayhawk's lead is up to seven points, which is the biggest lead of the game. Save for the moment. Akers got it to May. Who throws it up and in. Oh, oh you got to be kidding me. With three seconds on the shot clock. You talk about bailing them out. That's unreal. And we're going down low to Pierce. Quick move. Well, oh, that was halfway down and out. And Young fixed it to dive. Young spinning. Good pass. Dicking. Strip. On the floor. Still on the floor. LaFrance comes out of the pocket. Call. That's on Paul Pierce. Got to be on the push off. Oh no, they got it on Paco May. He must have had his arm underneath Pierce's. But it sure looked like Paul Pierce was pushing off on that box out. Well, you want to see that May shot again? I mean, great defense for Roy Williams' squad. I mean, look, how can you do a better job than get him in this position with three seconds to go on the shot clock? I mean, that's how you draw it up, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Let's run that old three-second play again. <laughs> Young coming out for a moment to get a quick breather. Kansas with a basketball. The fourth team foul on K-State this half. They work it to LaFrance again. Oh, boy. He's got 16 points all of a sudden. And just a terrific pass by John Barnes. I'm at the exact same angle Barnes had, and I don't even see LaFrance down there. Beautiful pass. McCullough silences the crowd. Pierce, Pierce, dipped out by Aker. Pollard's back in there for the first.
first time this half. Working off the screen. LaFrance, his favorite shot. Just barely missed, but there's Pierce, and he's fouled. And I think Akers is really hurt down here. Aker, Gerald Aker fell down, and he's really holding his hand. But he banged his elbow on the court. Well, that's terrific job right there by Rake, and he's down there, and he takes such good time, but then nobody bossed him out. Hey, when you're guarding an alley-oop, the responsibility to break up the play is out there on the point guard. Look how much distance Griffin is giving Vaughn. You cannot let a passer stand out there and just stare. I mean, especially a Jock Vaughn. A he'll pick you apart like a surgeon. So if you're going to stop that lob to Rafe, you've got to get out there and put pressure on Jock. Vaughn unofficially, four assists today. He already has the all-time Big 8 and Kansas record for most assists in a career. And I like the fact that they left the Big 8 records open this year. They let him go ahead because a guy like John Vaughn, you know, give him the recognition he deserves. Don't cut off the records just because the league folded, you know, emerged into the Big 12. I, I like the fact that the Big 8 made that decision. Back to a seven-point Kansas advantage. Under 13 to go in the ball game. Tipped out, and Pierce has got to keep the toe on the court. Thomas, right open for three. No. The French throw the rebound over Rhodes. Pierce will try a three. Yes. They hit one. Pierce now with ten. And the lead is ten. the place is real, real loud. <laughs> yes, it is. A foul on Thomas as he pushed Schwarzenegger. Second foul on Kansas this half. I think that jump shot by Thomas last time, that's one of the things that we were talking about, that even when they struggle outside, they have so many more weapons this year that they can come in and just keep running three-point shooters at you. Tom Asbury a little more concerned now as Kansas has turned up the defense to lead by 10. A Studio 66 update from Norman, Oklahoma. Check out Corey Brewer, the Sooners. Great fake right here. Then the drive in the paint goes up with a left hand. Nice play. But the Cowboys still bushwhacking him. 46-42. Back to Dave Armstrong, and we get it. Thanks a lot, Doug. Well, Kansas by 10, 52-42. They've gone on a 15-4 run read over the last four minutes. Uh, you know that's coming. When you play the Jayhawks, you just know they're going to go on one of those runs. And whether you're successful against them or not is how you react to those runs. So far, K-State's done a pretty good job at it, but right now, they need a bucket. Let's see where they call after the timeout. pretty good call down there. Marcus got the rebound for Tom Asbury, and he had it up above his head, and then just lost his balance and shuffled his feet. I think that's good officiating right there. Just great fundamental basketball. 
And it stretches the lead now to 14. Look at this, Robertson there for the tip home. And the Jayhawks have done it with their defense in the second half. We have final four tickets. Uh, I think uh, definitely this, this club is well on their way to the final four. Phillip 66, proud to be the title sponsor of Big 12 basketball. Be sure to stop by your local Phillip 66 station. Fill up with high quality, super clean gasoline only from Phillip 66, a performance company. Both teams shooting better in the second half, although Kansas State has been limited to just eight shots. But they're not taking those same shots out of transition. In the first half, they took a lot of quick shots, but suddenly they're not getting any of those quick shots anymore. Young. Look at the French score for the rebound. after transferring, so he was around but not playing. From Cal Berkeley, people forget that he was the backcourt running mate of Jason Kidd and Cal. Only trouble hitting the free throws today. The pass today at the line. You know, I read some interesting things he was saying about this heavily taped wrist, and he's got the broken bone, and he said, I really think it makes me concentrate on my mechanics. And I think that's good mentally to tell yourself that, but I'll tell you what, you've got a broken bone and you're shooting in, it affects your shot. I'm going to give you a wide look at the defense for Kansas to show you how active they are right now. Here comes Vaughn again with hands. With hands. Wow. A 22-4 run for KU and they've blown this game open. Oh. They're on their feet. 
catch are unraveling. The Jayhawks are rolling. And we're back after this from your friends at Phillips 66, the performance company. Jayhawks have blown it open with 7.45 in the second half, and they've done it with defense. 21 turnovers by the Wildcats, and 12 of them steals. Here's one of the 12, just great. Hustle down there, Jock Vaughn poking it loose. And then watch this sweet move. Look him off. I love that. What a sweet move. Watch him freeze the defense. Man, you talk about a great ball fake. They talk about showing the defense the ball. Well, he showed him the ball. You're a nice point guard for... I slam a jam. Did you ever make a move like that? Once. I, I wasn't awake, and it was late at night, but I made it. <laughs> Pierce. Tipped around, and Rhodes picks it up, and now Hass down and hurt. Hass hey, shaken up. What happened is he was down on the ground where he usually is. I mean, that's where you can usually find him, and somebody came down with their shoe and just landed right on top of his head. Get a little, little more bandages out. Tape him up. He'll be back in there. <laughs> yeah, he is that tough. That's exactly right. Take a look at him right here. He comes down, and he's trying to fight for the rebound. And you'll see him fall down, and then it looks like someone just comes down on his head. He falls down. Oh, no, he hits his own teammate's knee. Yeah, that's what it was. And then he got Pierce. Or Pierce got him. I'm not sure which. And that kind of shakes him up just a little bit. He'll be back in there. Griffin. Three, no. Tipped up and in by Aker. He's had three of those in the first half. That's the first one in the second half. Vaughn gets loose. Tipped out of bounds. Oh, you're down there fighting for a rebound. Roy Williams is pleased with the effort. I mean, you're never mad when everyone's down there and your Wildcats are down there. Tom Asbury saying, hey, look, guys, just talk to each other. You know, if, if you've got the board, say, I've got it, lock it up, and let's go the other way. The alley -oop. And that one hit the side of the rim where Pierce had an easy two. Good, fast break run by Kansas State, and Young picks it up. Three. He's still not hitting from long range. But it goes out of bounds off K-State. Tom Asbury's got to love that last fast break. you got to have two guards to do this, but if you keep passing the ball, look at the defense. I mean, they turned Jock Vaughn's head about four times, never allowed him to get down there and set up. That's a terrific fast break. The alley-oop again. LaFrance has got this one. And he's triple team down there. You know why that play is open? John Vaughn comes out and he does it. He throws that pass kind of like he's shooting a shot. Mm -hmm. And so everybody turns their head to watch the ball. And nobody tries to get in between Ray, Ray LaFrance and the, and the backboard down there. That's a great play. Well, LaFrance going to the line. He's 18 again. He scored more than 20 points in eight straight. the difference in volume. How about listen or listen? It's like church. That's the offering play, boy. He must be Baptist. <laughs> Pierce had it stripped by Young, but a foul on Young. A 6-16 to go. It appears that Kansas State maybe needs to stop by Phillips 66. They run out of gas a little bit. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. They've gotten very tired all of a sudden. And the problem for Coach Asbury is, what do you do? Yeah. I mean, do you want to press these guys and pick up the pace? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. anyway, the only thing that they can do, I think, is go back to taking those quick shots and transition off. And when they get the ball, come down there and just pull up and try to get some points in a hurry. Because I, I don't think there's any way in the world you go to any sort of full-court pressure. 
and the Jayhawks shoot free throws so well. Yeah. You don't necessarily need to turn it into a free throw shooting contest either. Pierce can't hit that second one, though. Still, Kansas is leading at 63-46. The Wildcats had a four-point lead in this half. Burst of speed from Griffin. Yeah, big, strong shoulders bouncing it off. But without a doubt, the turnovers are just killing Kansas oh, State. Boy. 22 turnovers to nine. And that is just a huge statistic. And you don't need to go any farther than that. Yeah, that points off. That's the difference in this contest. Well, look, and some of them have been unforced. I mean, that's an unforced turnover. That's right. just a bad pass. You just floated in there. And, man, if you're Coach Asbury, you don't want you guys floating passes. You've got to rifle those things in there. You can't make any mistakes against these guys, can you? Well, remember what we talked about the four teams? I mean, they really needed to play a perfect game in order to have a chance to win this. And they were real close to doing it in the first half. But they have been far less than perfect here in the second half. Another foul on Kansas. That one on Bradford, his first. Team foul number four. The Wildcats still not in a shooting bonus situation. Cullen gets free and hits another one. Nick Bradford just turned the back of his head to the ball. Yeah, that's a freshman mistake right there. Got to keep your eye on the ball, won't you? And your man. That's right. You got to see the ball, see your man. And then if you get beat, boy, I tell you what, you better fall back to the lane and ready to catch the ball going away from the basket instead of going to the basket. France trying to get free inside. Finally catches it. And they'll try to work another play inside. They do. The France with a little head fake and then throws it down. Boy, am I impressed with LaFrance. Well, you see him grimacing. He actually twisted his ankle a while ago. He's down there shaking his foot looking at it. But boy, if you can get that kind of shot off a twisted ankle, hey, that's a pretty good deal. Well, France who added a lot of bulk in the offseason with the great weightlifting program. He has uh, really become a man inside now. Well, at the end of this inbounds play a while ago is where LaFrance twists his ankle. But watch right here. Watch Bradford's head. He gets beat, and then look, right there, he didn't turn. He had no idea where the ball was. And if you're going to get beat in that situation, or if you're not going to watch the ball, then make sure you get beat with the offensive player going away from the basket, not cutting to the basket. Rose trying to lob it. That one picked off by Williams, and here comes Vaughn. Williams just tripped as he got near <laughs> mid-court. We didn't... He has half tips at home. He just tripped. He just flat out tripped. He's laughing now. Yeah, no, it's that half court line got him. <laughs> that thing will get you every time when you're not watching it. He's in those rose petals. So <laughs> yeah. on the court. Boy, Griffin really pushing off yeah. John Vaughn as he dribbles. sophomore young kid and so that will come kansas leading it by 17. 
Now let's take a look at the Pizza Hut plays of the game. Well, here at Allen Fieldhouse, you've said that you've heard this said a lot over the last four years. Vaughn to Hass, Hass to Vaughn, Vaughn with a sweet move oh. going inside. And then Jared Hass showing what he does best. I mean, he just hustles and stays after it. Look at him. He comes down there. He doesn't really get control of his ball. He just slaps it back up there. Look, two hands, just kind of like a volleyball set. Just jumped up there to keep the ball alive. A great play. Like Pizza Hut, Vaughn and Hass making it great again and again. Under four to go in this one. Kansas comfortably ahead now by 17. Pierce. Oh, boy. They don't have a weakness. I mean, choose your poison. Yeah. Unbelievable. What a talented club this is. And look how much fun they're having. Look at Coach Williams. And look, okay, okay, big fella, you hit one. After their loss to Missouri, it took him out bowling. He wanted these guys to have more fun. And boy, they're having fun now. All smiles. They're going to go to 15 0 at home this year. And their 44th straight win at home. The Rock Chalk Chant echoing through the hall of Allen Fieldhouse. Ransom and Ransom, the senior walk-ons in there. It'll be an emotional moment when Hass and Vaughn come out of this game. You watch right now. They're going to get those senior walk-ons a shot. They're going to keep turning this over until one of those seniors gets to put the ball up. You watch 
Steve Ransom can get a shot next time they go down the floor. Stops the clock. Vaughn with the foul. Vaughn almost oh, like good. Now the clock stopped. Uh, one of us can check out. Thomas checking in. Hans will be the first to go. Jared Hans, who played three years in a Kansas uniform. Now, B.J. Williams. Jojo White played here, Darnell Valentine, Cedric Hunter, but Vaughn, more assists than any of them. Ransom with the rebound. Ransom just throws it out. <laughs> he wants to, doesn't he? Did I tell you he's going to try to get a shot up? He does. Is just terrific. I'm ecstatic that both those young men got a bucket here in the last game. Now they're going to get the applause as seniors of having the opportunity to check out of this game. Ransom will be the first. He'll be followed by Branstrom. senior class in Kansas history and that's saying a lot. Next year they'll celebrate the 100th year of KU basketball. And these four seniors and really these six seniors contributed to the best four year winning percentage in the last 60 years in Jayhawk history basketball. That is absolutely phenomenal. Well, the only thing left for them to accomplish is to win it all about a month from now. festivities and they're going to be senior speeches that's something that Roy Williams will remind them after the game is that hey look as great as this was as special as it is we're the first big 12 champions our business is not done we've got a tournament we're going to go win and then we've got March Madness well, Kansas does wrap up the big 12 today with the win has turned into quite a party. Kansas State, who led by one at the half, tried as hard as they possibly could. Give Asbury's club a lot of credit today. They played under a lot of adversity coming into unfriendly uh, waters here, but boy, they, they swam hard in that first half and through the first part of the second half, but Kansas finally wore them down. And that's a young squad. One senior, two juniors, and all the rest freshmen and sophomore. So this will be a great learning tool Tom Asbury can use with these kids. Josh Reed, one of those freshmen from Brewster, Kansas, puts it home. Final moments of this one. wins by 20. Vaughn and Hass and Pollard, Williams, Grant from Ransom all playing here for the final time. Roy Williams said he'd shed a tear when these guys left. Well, Kansas with no tears at all today as they win it by 20. Studio 66 picks it up in a moment.